The Old Testament lesson this morning is taken from the sixth chapter of Micah, verses one through eight. This is God sort of scolding the Israelites for what they were doing after all of what he had given to them or done for them. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains and let the hills hear your voice. Hear the mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you, enduring foundations of the earth, for the Lord has controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery, and I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak and Moab devised, what Balaam and Beor answered him, and what happened from Shem and Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. What would, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old, Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Gospel lesson is taken from Matthew 5. It's actually the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All good things happen on top of a mountain, at least in the Bible. Moses gets the Ten Commandments on top of a mountain, and the transfiguration happens on top of a mountain. And the Gospel lesson is the first part of Jesus' Sermon on a Mountain, the Sermon on the Mount. So all good things happen on mountains, at least in the Bible. As Hal said, these 12 verses from Matthew chapter five, the first 12 verses are called the Beatitudes. And they're called the Beatitudes because the word in Latin for blessed is beati. So when, it was in, when the uh, scripture was in Latin, the Beatitudes, beati, blessed, became the Beatitudes. I love to preach. And I truly feel like sometimes sermons just flow out of me like a gift from God. I may feel that way more than you do. But then there's Sundays like this one. There's not much flow and there's lots of struggle. So I'm just going to dive in. First, the word blessed. 
The word blessed can also be translated as happy, which doesn't really fit. Happy are the poor in spirit. Happy are those who mourn. It can also mean honored. And I offer to you honored by God. Honored are those who are meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Better, I think. Honored. Honored by God. So Jesus is forever turning the order of the day on its head. Jesus is forever doing that, turning the order of the day on its head, saying, hey, the world can be different. Try looking at it this way, Jesus says. And I offer to you that's what's going on in the Beatitudes. And here's what I mean. When my beloved oldest niece, Julia, was four years old, My mother and sister and I took her to Storyland in New Hampshire. Perhaps you've heard of it, perhaps you've been there. Storyland is a theme park for children's stories and nursery rhymes. There is the shoe that is a house or a house that is a shoe, as in there was an old woman who lived in a shoe. We had a great day, and when we got home that night, my brother-in-law said to Julia, did you have fun? And she said, oh, Dad, we had a great time. We saw Mickey Mouse, we saw Goofy, we saw Donald Duck. (laughs) And my mom and sister and I looked at each other and we thought, where the heck did she spend the day? (laughs) There's, uh, there are nursery rhymes at Storyland, but there are no Disney characters. But one of the great things about being four is that you see the world in your own lens which the way you see the world does not necessarily have anything to do with your present circumstance. If you spent time around little kids, you know that this is a wonderful gift, seeing the world differently. So Jesus is forever turning the order of the day on its head, and in the Beatitudes, I offer to you that Jesus invites us to see the world differently. Jesus invites us to be four years old again, In the Beatitudes, Jesus invites us to understand that God's reality, the way God sees the world, does not necessarily have anything to do with present circumstance. This is what the Beatitudes are not. They are not a checklist of how to be good. They are not a way to earn salvation. The Beatitudes are opposite of what the world is like, an invitation to see the world as God does, perhaps, as Jesus wills the world to be, perhaps a description of the Christian life. These words from Jesus in the Beatitudes are radical because they're not commands or encouragements to become blessed, to become honored. Instead, they are a statement of how the world might be, that those who mourn can be comforted, not just pitied, where those who hunger and thirst for righteousness are satisfied, not ignored, and where the meek inherit the earth rather than being pushed to the sidelines. The invitation from Jesus in this lesson is to begin to see the world in a like manner. So Jesus goes up the mountain and sits with his disciples and he addresses them right where they are in their present circumstance and invites them to see the world differently, invites them to consider that God's reality doesn't have anything to do with present circumstance. And I thought as I worked on this sermon, maybe that's enough. The Beatitudes are about God's way of seeing the world of turning the order of the day on its head, about who is honored by God in the kingdom of God. And maybe that's enough. But I don't actually think so. Because there's struggle here. There's struggle to hear ourselves or anyone honored if we are meek or happy, to go back to that translation of blessed, happy if we are in mourning. And the struggle is for us. The invitation, perhaps not explicit, but I offer to you implicit, 
is that Jesus teaches the disciples. And who do we seek to be? To be disciples of Jesus, to be followers of Christ. So if we are people who seek to follow Jesus, what are we doing to bring about that blessedness, that happiness, that honor to those whom the world seldom, if ever, honors? What are we doing to bring about a reversal of the world order? What are we doing to turn the order of the day on its head? And that's a struggle. It's not easy, and I don't think it's meant to be. It is the life of faith. It is the invitation from God in Christ to us. And maybe that's enough. I'm sure it probably is, but just a little bit more. Jesus knows people more than they know themselves. Jesus knows us more than we can know ourselves. He sees things in the disciples, he sees things in us that we sometimes miss. There are so very many things that we are. We may have bodies that work great. We may have bodies that are giving us a lot of pain. We may find ourselves in the throes of mourning and our limitations can sometimes define who we are. But then Jesus sees the disciples, Jesus sees the crowds, Jesus sees us. And he doesn't miss the wounds, he doesn't miss the limitations, but he says he invites something deeper, something more that has the power to push into every situation, to bring newness, to bring possibility. Jesus calls to that in us. Jesus calls to the more of us. We are so many different things. And sometimes we have to consult the vision of someone who is not us, who sees deeply into our lives and can tell us truths about ourselves that we have forgotten. Call us to more than we, we can see in our own self. It is said in the Gospels that Zacchaeus, the little man in the tree, learned to see and love in himself what Jesus saw and loved in him. And that perhaps Peter learned to see in himself what Jesus saw and loved in him. We are more than we know. But Jesus knows. Jesus knows the more that we are. And what he sees in us is, to, is as he calls forth from us is that we might be a blessing to bring happiness and honor to God's beloved and yet so hurting world. May we each and all seek to bring forth God's holy reign. Amen.